as we get up to those higher numbers. So there was a lot of them, you could see, that are on the lower side. So the time between arrivals, we tend to have a bunch that are on the, on the, on the shorter side when things are following this uh, exponential distribution. And then we've got a few that take a lot longer in the interims. And that, and that is how you can kind of imagine what's happening with our curve. So then we're gonna say, okay, I can also represent this in terms of a percent of the total. So these frequency bins, if I add them up, should add up to the number of counts that we did over here, the number of customers that we looked at and saw the interim time, which was 300, so that looks correct. And so I can divide each of these then by the total of 300. So 51 over 300, whoops, hold on a second. Uh, 51 over 300 gives us the point gives us the 0.17 or 17 percent so there's going to so we can represent this as a percent then uh as well which is what it's going to be represented as when we do the actual exponential distribution and so that's a that's showing that calculation okay so then i could do it i can do it this way x equals the arrivals during one minute and let's this time use our actual expone.dist so now i'm going to do the same thing not using our randomly generated numbers, which represent us actually going out there with a, with a stopwatch, but now we're just gonna do the smooth curve using our expone.dist, where I'm just gonna take the X here, we're gonna take the lambda, uh, and then we're gonna take the cumulative. It's not gonna be cumulative, so we put a zero. So now we're gonna plot this out with our actual curve, which is similar. Notice it's giving us, it's giving us the percentages, right? because when I use this curve, I'm not gonna get an actual frequency because, because we're looking at the percentages. So then I'd have to, you know, if I looked at this one, what's the likelihood that we have the one minute? And then if I did it 300 times, you would think the 300 times the point uh, one four one one would be the actual frequency, you know, uh, of it. So this is, that's why you need the percent that we have so we can compare over there. And so, so this is what we get when we get the smooth curve or the curve generated from our function, right? And you can compare these out. So if this is the one, this is versus one, two, and two, three, and three, four, and four, five, and five. And so you could see they're somewhat similar. And so if I was to plot this out, this is the enter arrival times from our actual data set, plotting this out in a histogram, which looks like this, and you could see it kind of it's approximating the shape that we would expect. It's not perfect, of course, because we, we didn't generate, we only generated 300 numbers. Uh, here, here's, here it is with another, uh, another uh, type of graph. And then if I looked at it in comparison to the actual, the actual curve, which is the blue curve in this case, so the blue curve is a nice smooth curve compared to the random generated curve, we can see that it approximates what we would expect from, from the exponential distribution. So, and so the, the general idea with these line weighting situations, like why does that happen? And you can see why it kind of happens here is because you've got these, the, the times are often short, the intervals are often short, but then you have some of those intervals that are the, that are the long intervals. Right, and that's what's giving it that characteristic type of shape, which often happens in these line weighting situations. So if you were in a, if you, so if you saw the Poisson distribution in a line weighting situation, then again, oftentimes you would think that if you took the exponential, the time between, that it would follow, you know, this kind of exponential characteristic uh, shape as well.